alien bulletin. This time, I am comfortable in making it official, at least from an editorial standpoint, and in my opinion, we definitely have sufficient evidence for life on Mars. The evidence is utterly overwhelming, at least on the bacterial level. There is life on Mars, perhaps in the past only, but I strongly doubt that. Welcome. That was from the Angry Astronaut, his amazing YouTube channel. Basically arguing that it is unequivocal. We definitely have life on Mars, which would totally revamp all of our Drake equations, right? It would make it much more likely if there's life just on that planet, then how does that change actual the amount of life in the galaxy and the universe. And that was on Mars, but let's look at new findings from Venus, the other planet on our other side. But more interestingly, there's been a lot of additional observations of the Venusian atmosphere and a lot of new interest in this atmosphere because of the potential discovery of a molecule known as phosphine, a phosphor-based molecule that, at least on Earth, seems to be entirely produced by life Suggesting, of course, that this is a biosignature, which of course implied potential detection of life in the Venusian atmosphere. So this is our sister planet, Venus. In 2020, a team of astronomers detected phosphine gas in the Venusian atmosphere using the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope and the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. Phosphine is considered a potential biosignature because on Earth it's produced by microbial activity in anaerobic environments. Thanks for being here. Please hit the like button if you do like this content and subscribe for future notifications of the videos. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. So Mars, have we really investigated Mars? The Viking missions in the 1970s were the only ones to directly measure microbial life. They conducted the first light detection experiments. Then Curiosity rover, which has been exploring Gale Crater since 2012, and the Perseverance rover landed in 2021. So they had experiments to test for possibility of ancient microbial life or conditions for microbial life. So in 2019, the Curiosity rover detected a spike in methane levels. Methane can be pr produced by biological processes, though it can also be generated geologically. What they found, though, is that methane would actually rise when it was warmer, you know, implying that there's some sort of organic life there. As far as organic molecules, Perseverance discovered organic molecules in the Martian soil. Those organic molecules, such as manganese, are potential building blocks of life. So they found the building blocks of life, all the organic molecules everywhere. The Viking missions actually did find signs of life, but it was controversial, and supposedly it was not confirmed. So many astrobiologists believe that the presence of methane in organic molecules indicates the potential for past or even present microbial life, as Angry Astronaut says there, thinks it could even be present life. Though some geologists argue that non-biological processes, such as serpentization, could explain the findings. But the overwhelming amount of evidence, that's what Angry Astronaut argues, the overwhelming amount of evidence leads to the, the only conclusion that there is microbial life on Mars and definitely has been in the past. So that would be amazing. And as we'll see at the end here, we'll really update the Drake equation. Okay, now if we go to Venus surface temperatures around 467 degrees Celsius, that's 872 Fahrenheit, and atmospheric pressure 92 times that of Earth. So the surface is inhospitable for life as far as we know it. But there's renewed interest in Venus as a target for astrobiology due to discoveries in its atmosphere. But in 2020, a team of astronomers detected phosphine gas in the Venusian atmosphere using the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope that's out in Hawaii and the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. Phosphine is considered a potential biosignature bio because on Earth it's produced by microbial activity 
in anaerobic environments, so without oxygen. But what they believe is that there is a temperate zone. So it's like a Goldilocks zone, if you will. At 50 kilometers of altitude, Venus has temperatures and pressures similar to Earth's surface, where life as we know it could potentially exist. You could have acidic clouds composed mostly of sulfur sulfuric acid, which is obviously a harsh environment. Yet some extremophiles on Earth can survive in acidic conditions. So we have evidence of this. So that, that leads some scientists to suggest that the detection of phosphine could be a sign of microbial life in the Venusian clouds, as well as ammonia. So they've also found ammonia, and that could also be a precursor for life. So that's been a, another recent discovery. Still, other researchers propose that unknown chemical or geological processes could produce phosphine without biological activity, but could they also produce the ammonia that we're seeing? Basically, you have life indicators at Venus and Mars. It may just be microbial life, but even then, that would drastically affect the Drake equation. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is the Drake equation. We've covered this before. Large N is the number of civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy with which communication might be possible. So intelligent civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. Did this exercise in previous videos and got 19, I believe, actual civilizations in the galaxy. So how would it change if we found evidence of life, microbial life on Mars and Venus? We have cars, the average rate of star formation in our galaxy. FP is the fraction of those stars that have planets, so it wouldn't affect that. It would affect the NE, the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets. So in the previous exercise, I used 0.1 for this. F1, the fraction of planets that could support life that actually develop life at some point. I think it would also change this, right? Because then we can know that basically you have more possible planets that could support life because we're finding life on inhospitable areas, right? Things that we did not think could support life, such as Venus. Now you're talking about, could you have all these moons? Think of the 80 plus moons of Jupiter and Saturn, et cetera. It wouldn't affect FI. That's the fraction of planets with life that go on to develop intelligent life. And it won't affect the fraction of civilizations de that develop a technology that releases detectable signs. And it won't affect the length of time for with which such civilizations release detectable signals into space. Although maybe it could give us some idea if there were previous civilizations on those planets. So it'll affect the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets, possibly moons. And if you just, it'll be a direct multiplicative factor, right? So if it's, if it goes up to 0.5 from 0.1, that means that you have five times the likelihood of finding an intelligent civilization in our galaxy. So go from 19 to almost a hundred civilizations in our galaxy. I think that's what it would change on the Drake equation if we did confirm finally life on Mars and then possibly on Venus. If you check out those excellent videos, links in the description to Angry Astronaut and Anton Petrov. Exciting times we live in. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. It really helps and it's free. Consider subscribing to get future notifications of when I release videos. And you might like this video. If you want to support the channel, join these great people over here, get exclusive bonus content, then click this button here patreon.com forward slash Chris Lado or become a YouTube member. If you want to continue the discussion, go to UAP Society Discord. Links are all in the description. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.